What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right, so Joel Embiid has been in the news recently. Um, it was hmm, maybe about, maybe about two weeks ago now, where he uh, reportedly said that he will never again in his career play back to backs. Then, of course, on opening day, he, along with Paul George, did not play for the Philadelphia 76ers uh, in their opening game against the Milwaukee Bucks. It was then revealed that Joel Embiid is not injured, but the organization decided that uh, due to his injury history, due to the fact that uh, he may not be in great basketball shape, they just chose not to play him. He also, I believe, did not play last night for the club. Um, Shaquille O'Neal, as did Charles Barkley, as did Ken, Kenny Smith on Inside the NBA, uh, had some words about the Philadelphia 76ers organization and Joel B. Um, it wasn't really good, uh, saying that uh, these guys get paid a lot of money and uh, they should at least try to play, especially if they're not hurt. Well, Shaq reiterated on that point in a recent appearance on the big podcast. Former NBA big man Shaquille O'Neal called out Sixers star Joel Embiid over his new resting policy. After finding out that Embiid plans to avoid back-to-back -back games for the rest of his career, O'Neal labeled him as soft and questioned what has him so tired to begin with, saying, quote, you have to want to be that guy. And with his statement the other day, I don't think Joel Embiid wants to be that guy. I actually want him to take it personal. You can't come out before the season and, and say, I'm not playing back-to-backs. S-O-F-T. I want the smoke. It ain't Magic City no more. I want it. So when I come out, so when he come out and say he's not playing back-to-backs, I thought about it first like, wait a minute, you don't get double teamed. You don't get triple teamed. All he's doing is pick and pop. Why are you tired? Well, look, man, <clears throat> on the one hand, I said this before, Shaq has a history of being extremely, let's say, harsh when it comes to great big men talent that have subsequently come after his peak, starting with Dwight Howard. Um, you know, some people can look at it as he just, he, you know, he, <clears throat> he has a little bit of a hater gene, right? I can see that. But you could also look at it as Shaq looks at himself as the caretaker of the legacy of great big men. Okay, all the other ones are pretty much passed on from the scene. You know, or they they you know, they're older, you know, they're not actively in the NBA media. Uh many of them have passed on. Bill Walton, may he rest in peace, we lost him this year. Bill Russell, we lost a couple of years ago. Will Chamber, we lost quite a while ago. Um you know, same thing with uh, Willis Reed, Bob Lanier, the list goes on. Mark Eaton, even though he wasn't on that level, but, you know, the Kim Matumbo. Uh, Kareem is still here, but, you know, Kareem is older. He's not in the media like that. So Shaq is pretty much the standard bearer and the voice of the great big man lineage. So he does have a right to say the things that he's saying. Um. And it's not like Shaq don't have a point here. Like, the physicality has been taken completely out of the game. So, just, for, I mean, for the most part, I'm not saying guys don't get hurt, but basketball is not what we grew up watching, especially in the paint. That's where it's really uh, been taken, the physicality has been taken out. So, like he said, if you're doing pick and pops all day, you're not in the, you're, you know, you're not in the paint because Shaq has said in the past, Joel Embiid being as big as he is, 
as he put it, get your big ass down the paint. He doesn't do that. So look, at the end of the day, I kind of agree with what a lot of people say about Joel B. He walking around probably well over 300 pounds when he's not playing. When he plays in the NBA, he looks like he's generally between 285 and 300. That's a little bit heavy. A little bit heavy, man. Joel Embiid is a big guy, but he doesn't have Shaq's frame. Okay? Pat Ewing, who wasn't a small guy himself, at the at his heaviest, he's about 255. 255, 258, 260. At his heaviest, when he was in his absolute best shape, he was around 240, 245. And he was kind of, kind of a big guy. So, yeah, when you look at Joel Embiid's physique, it suggests to me that some of his injuries are coming from him just not being in the best of shape. And I've you know, heard that from time and time again from all other NBA players. When you're not in your best condition, that raises your risk of getting hurt. And then being that big, seven feet tall, and uh, almost 300 pounds, and with the speed of today's game, you're just asking for wear and tear injuries, which is why yeah, some of the injuries that Joel B get are freak injuries, but some of them, especially when you look at a lot of his injuries seem to come from the waist down. You know, you tend to think that a lot of them are wear and tear stress injuries from not being in the best of shape and a little bit overweight. You know, but other than that part, yeah, Shaq is right, man. I remember they made another point. Like Joel Embiid is capable of having great years, great individual seasons. Um, he, He has shown that. Right, I remember a couple of years ago, Charles Barkley and Shaq issued a challenge to Joel Embiid. Like, I think this is when he was averaging around 24, 26, 9, 10. So those are great numbers, man, but you have the potential to be a historically great player. From a skill perspective, you may be the most skilled big man we've ever seen. Offensively. Um... You should dominate this league in a way that nobody has done outside of Will Chamberlain with the skills that Joel B possesses. And he did that. And he's done that in the regular season when he's available. But I do want to call something out here. Maybe I'm being overly harsh or critical here, but is it just my observation that sometimes like Joel B? wants to beat up on back or inferior competition and duck smoke with the better team or the better matchups. I mean, he's been what, since 2019, since he's played in Denver. Now we all know Denver has this high altitude. Um, That doesn't bode well for a player who's not in the best of shape. You know, that's one of the competitive advantages that players have when they play in Denver and have gotten used to the altitude Visiting teams get tired quicker. Uh, last time Joel B did play in Denver, he had an atrocious performance. Um, you know, and look, this is a guy that can score 70 points against Victor Wambayama, uh, against a horrid Spurs team. But, you know, in the playoffs, when it matters, you know, these performances are non-existent. Where are these 40.15 rebound games in the postseason? We don't see them. We don't see them. Even when he was healthy, he's not playing at the same level. I think in that next series, he averaged like 23 and 10 or something. I mean, those are good numbers, but far cry from the 33, 34 he was averaging the regular season. So, yeah, man, Shaq, I agree with what he's saying when it comes to Joel B, man. Like, why are you tired? You guys load managed all the time. It ain't like you're playing 82 games a year. You're not playing 40 minutes a night like Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell. Um, by the way, in the 60s, the pace of the game was even faster than today. So it's not even a pace thing. Um, why are you tired? I think a lot of us are tired, right? <laughs> 
Aren't we tired? A lot of us work two jobs just to make ends meet. Some of us work two and a half, three jobs. We don't get guaranteed money. Maybe if these guys got paid per check, and if we start penalizing these guys and taking away hundreds of thousands of dollars that they would get paid otherwise, you know, in games they don't play, hmm, I think the motivation to play was suddenly kick in with some of these clowns. And let's not forget that sometimes, a lot of times, actually, the organizations play a role in this as well. Big time. But anyway, tell me what you guys think. 